All right, welcome back, everybody, and good morning to you. Welcome back to B-Size Las Vegas 2023. Today we have uh, how to handle getting dumped, compromised passwords. This is Suzanne Paskey, who will be presenting. We'd like to first thank our sponsors, especially our diamond sponsor, Adobe, and our gold sponsors, SemGrep, Blue Cat, PlexTrack, and Conductor One. It's their support, along with our other sponsors, donors, and volunteers that make this event possible. As a reminder, these talks are being streamed live and will be recorded and made available to you after the conference. So please take this moment to make sure that your phones are silent or completely off. And also, um, because this is a little bit of a shorter talk, I do ask that you all save your questions for the very end. If we do have time, I will come around with a microphone for you to ask them. But please do not ask or raise your hand for questions in the middle of the talk. Save them for the very end. With that, I will turn it over to Suzanne. Cool. Thank you. So this is uh, how to handle uh, getting dumped. Uh, I write some kind of clever titles, and sometimes it's not always completely clear what it is I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to set a few expectations here. First of all, don't take it personal. Sometimes it really is about them. It's not about you. Um, I, I also mean this to be that I'm writing this more about organizational security. Uh, the, the stuff about personal, um, taking it for uh, your own use, is just a little bit incidental. I mean this mostly for organizational security. And then I'm going to be not talking about um, cookies or tokens. I'm just focusing on, on passwords primarily um, in this talk. And who am I and why should you listen to me? Um, during my day, day job, I'm a threat hunter and um, incident response team investigator. So I'm kind of looking at, at this data quite a bit. Um, during my nights and weekends, I'm a hack coordinator uh, in the North Carolina Raleigh-Durham area for B-Sides RDU, CACLAGICON, um, DC919, very involved in the community. Um, I call myself an expert in one room, and I kind of say expert in quotes. Um, it's really just that I can um, kind of Google the information faster than anybody else on the team, and that kind of makes me the expert. Um, and it's also only in that one room. I like to come out into these larger rooms where maybe I'm not the expert anymore. There's other experts um, that I can learn from or teach other people to be the, the experts where, they're at, where they are. And then when I'm not doing anything technically related, um, lately I've been doing um, improv comedy, um, going out and just kind of playing, doing like whose line is it anyway type jokes um, with, with a group of people. So you'll see some kind of bad jokes pop up <laughs> through this talk. Um, and then like, why, why am I talking about, about passwords? I mean, it's passwords con. Um, but last year I did a, a presentation about second factor, multi-factor authentication, the secrets and going threat hunting in there uh, and finding interesting things in that and I decided to shift left a little bit and take it take a look at like hey wh what are the logs that are available for for password compromises and password dumps so um password dumps 101 um like how how do they get dumped in the first place there's utilities like Mimi cats and kiwi um gsec dump cred dump password dump then there's also the th the third party um, breaches and password reuse sometimes you don't always know how that happens um, or why that happens the other thing is um, commodity malware. That uh, that area has uh, started to expand more and more, and the the f landscape keeps cha changing with it. So there, um, the some of the ones I looked into were Redline Stealer, Mystic Stealer, Vidar, um, Meta Stealer, Airbum, White Snake, and then there's all sorts of other um, malware as a service. So what exactly is is being dumped? What sort of information are are we getting out of these? Um, obviously, uh, credentials and passwords. Sometimes you get browser history and cookies. They're able to get saved form data, credit card data, um, IP addresses, files and screenshots. Um, in, in some cases, they'll, they'll go after cold uh, desktop cryptocurrency wallets. And then associated with those sometimes are um, multi-factor codes associated with, with some of those cryptography uh, or cryptocurrency um, wallets and stuff where they're, they're kind of rolling their own MFA tokens as well. And um, some of these dumpers will grab that information. Um, and, and you might be saying to yourself, but, but wait, I'm, I'm using Google Chrome and it, and it has a password manager. I, I, should, be, I should be safe, right? <laughs> Who's using Google Chrome for their password manager? Anybody? Okay. <laughs> so, so, so you probably know this. There's a little bit more going on there um, where on device encryption, um, you have to go in and, and click that option. It's, it's not turned on by default. So the, the passwords are encrypted while they're sent over the network and they're, they're encrypted when, when they're saved at Google. But uh, on device encryption, um, you know, they, they say over time the security measure will be set up for everyone. So it, so it is an opt-in right now. Um, so that's, 
that that's something to keep in mind there. All right. So where, where, where can you get your passwords? <laughs> where can you get, get them back from? Um, there, there's underground marketplaces. Uh, there's telegram channels that, that the uh, malware operators have set up where they'll be dumping that information to. Um, have I Been Pwned is starting to pick up uh, some of those, some of that information as well and making it available. There's um, initial access brokers. And then there's now vendors that are coming out and offering that as, as a service um, to, to get that information for you to use. So th there's some good news. Um, there are logs. I, I, I love looking at logs, all, all, all sorts of logs. Um, they, they tell me things. Uh, and, and some of the logs that are coming out of some of these malware, mal well, malware um, stealers are, are actually pretty good. Like, like they're better than some um, SAS, like Fortune 500 company logs, um, where, where maybe those companies have decided to obfuscate things. Um, the malware logs are actually really good. So when you delve in and you look at them, um, it, it gives you quite a bit of, of uh, good information. It's kind of rivaling like endpoint detection um, almost when it, the amount of information that it's giving you. So you could take a look at the user data and it gives you a good follow up point. Like if it was one of your users um, that, that, that you find in one of these dumps, you know who to go to and, and who to um, like remediate. And that helps you with like focused education. And uh, you can also get some information about the IP location. Maybe they, they were using a device or logging in from somewhere they shouldn't have been um, when they happened to get dumped. So you can check that out. Then there's also things like the, the device data. And particularly for here, there's, um, you can pay attention to the asset, taking a look if it's a corporate asset. Um, you know, did, did something that your company owns get compromised? And then you can go back and, and remediate it um, and look if there were any sort of um, other things that, that went along in that incident. Or if it was a personal device, do you have that range? Do you have that scope um, to do anything with it? Uh, this can also be a surprise SOC assessment. So, you know, did your endpoint detection even fire? Did it recognize that this was malware? Um, if it did recognize it, was the alert fired to your SOC correctly? And then if it did get there, did, did the analysts handle it correctly? Um, did, did they take a look and did they remediate it properly? Did they say, oh, this was a malware infection, we, we cleaned it up, closed ticket, um, completely ignoring that it was a credential stealer and not doing anything for, for the credential piece? And, and that could be the case because you're now reading the, the passwords in a malware dump. So uh, this can also be... You know, if, if your endpoint didn't detect it, you could have potentially new malware here that, that you can go in and, and take a look at. Um, and then you can also get potentially new um, IOCs. And then another thing here, you know, if, if you don't like the logs um, or, or you think they're lacking some information, it turns out that um, Mystic Stealer that, that was released in April this year, they, they put it on prominent underground forums and they had well-known veterans on that forum go through and, and give valuable feedback and, and information, you know? So if you want to see enhancements to these logs, you know, maybe go out on those forums and do um, you think they have Jira? Uh, <laughs> submit a request. Um, so, so some of the bad news, um, with, with more money, there is there is more problems. So the attackers are making money off these dumps. Um, to the tune of some of these paid telegram channels can be between $300 and $900 a month uh, for you to access some of the password dumps. Uh, the initial access brokers uh, are also selling this information. Bids can start at $1,000, buy now for $10,000, get a big pack of passwords and uh, go use that. And then uh, vendor licensing plans, the vendors that are going out and uh, finding this information for you and kind of bundling it all together. Um, one of the other bad things uh, is, is usability. Um, you are getting data from malware. Um, you know, d does your zero trust plan include trusting malware dumps? Um, you know, you, it, there could also be misconfigurations, misconfigurations in the malware, misconfigurations on the endpoint. Uh, when it says those timestamps are in UTC, do you trust them? Uh, when you go back and look through your logs, you know, how much further back do you go look through? Um, also, be because these logs are money, are they just dumping gibberish data just to sell it, and it's not even valid data. And then the other thing is sometimes you'll you'll see hashes instead of plain text passwords. So you have to go out and uh, dump yourself um, in order to compare those hashes. Um, then of course there's legal and policy questions. So ransomware versus passwords, you know, will, will your company pay, you know, um, malicious people a ransomware? And if you're not willing to pay for Ransomware, are you willing to pay for passwords? Or 
Um, there's also, you know, is your company or are you willing to go directly to the source or are you going to use a, a broker or vendor to kind of obfuscate um, that, that you're out in that space? And then, of course, there, there's personal versus corporate. What happens when you do get one of your employees, but it is a personal uh, device uh, and maybe a personal website that they were logging into, but they were using like your corporate email address and, and how are you going to handle those things and, and communicate that? So turning all of this data into action, um, you're going to want to ingest from, if you choose, and uh, you get through legal and everything and you are able to ingest the data, um, you probably want to get that from a couple of different sources, maybe test out at different sources, different vendors, um, different places where, where you're able to, to get that from. And then um, the first thing you want to do is validate that those usernames are legitimate. They aren't just making up data uh, that's completely false. Um, and then once you're... Once you've done that, you want to validate the, the passwords, the hash, or the, the, the plain text um, to see how much of a big deal it, of it, it, it is, um, doing that initial triage to see how quickly you need to get on it and respond to it. Uh, you also want to check those host details, again, talking about um, the, uh, the, the corporate asset versus the personal asset and what you're able to do and, um, and focus on there. And then uh, checking the IP details. Um, you know, were, were they logging in from somewhere they, they shouldn't have been um, or using different assets? And then the next piece is uh, planning the response. Um, you know, how, how are you going to secure the user account? How are you going to, if the password is known, if it is fully compromised, locking that user out of the system um, and then getting them to secure their password, you know, making them call into IT, um, however you need to plan that to, to secure the account. And then securing the, the device, are, are you sure that the malware is off the device? If they reset their password and it's still infected, you're going to have to go through and secure the account again, re-secure the device again, and all that. And then you also want to plan the communications. If you're going to be taking a user offline, um, you want to have a good like FAQ for them and for their manager, explain why you're taking it offline, explain why they're having to go through and, and remediate their laptop. Um, or whatever device. Um, if it's not a corporate asset, how are you going to communicate to the user, like, hey, you have malware on your personal device, or, or however you're able to communicate that? And then um, in the event that you know you, you do see that the password um, was correct, you, you want to go through and you want to first go through your authentication logs and see, you know, is there an incident? Was, the, was it used from an unusual location from where that user usually logs in from? Um, and then also take a look at the, the second factor, the multi-factor logs, and this is where I plug my, my talk from last year again, where um, I talk about going threat hunting in those, in those multi-factor logs. If you do see the first factor used, um, go follow up on the second factor. Uh, and then a couple of different ways to do mitigation. Um, discourage the, the stored, uh, stored passwords in the browser, like Google Chrome, uh, other browsers, that's kind of weak. Um, encourage good password managers. So, so some of the well-known um, other brands, especially if you can uh, provide that to your employees in such a way that they can then share it. So some uh, password manager companies also uh, offer like home licenses. So if they're able to use that at home and encourage that uh, kind of culture there, they, they'll, they're more likely to use it um, in the office. So that, that's kind of also where I encourage like a work-life balance. Like are you... Um, allowing your employees to even use their personal devices to, to log in and use their credentials from there. Um, are, are you encouraging them to log in from, you know, log in on the weekends, log in on, on nights where they're maybe using a less secure device and what are you even allowing in on your network? And then using the corporate assets, of course, making sure that your, your endpoint is up to date and you're using some defense in depth. And then SOC analyst training, they making sure that they know that they if they see malware to follow up and see if it's a credential stealer um, and then securing the accounts and things like that. And then, of course, you use multi-factor authentication, use strong multi-factor authentication and get the logs, look at the logs. Um, logs are awesome, just always read the logs. Um, and, and that's that's it. I, I get nervous and I talk fast and I think I'm way under time. Um, so so I'm just going to say say thanks to the, the B-Sides Las Vegas um, for, for having me here. Um, the, my RTP community, uh, I kind of talked to them about some of these things, coworkers, employees. Um, the, the researchers out there, I, I pulled from a lot of um, other sources and vendors. And then I guess my last like bad joke here is it's only cred credential intelligence if it's from the business floor region of Black Hat. Otherwise, it's just sparkling malware logs. <laughs>
All right, and at this point, I'll, I'll, I'll take some questions. Yeah. How do you imagine this process starts? Does it, like, you're, I mean, does, like, a bad actor email your company and say, try to ransom the blogs, anything we have enough, or do you just have to be watching, like, cybercrime forums to see what your company name pops up, or do you wait for your, like, seed to hit off of, you have a bunch of, like, password, you know, the NFA is pinging off of this person through weird IPs, like, maybe we should go look for a dog school. How do you start it? Okay, so, so the, the question was about how do you start looking at the dumps. Um, I, I think in most cases you're, you're going out like proactively and, and looking for those dumps and getting them that way. But like if you do, do see a spike in a, a, like password sprays or something, that, that might encourage you to go look at those dumps more quickly. Um, so yeah, I, I think that you would be more proactive with it. Yes? Is paste bin still a thing with dumps? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Okay, so, so the question was about admins and, and VIPs. Uh, when you say admins, do you mean like um, administ like sys admins, or do you mean like an, an executive, like an admin assistant to the to the VIP? Okay, so it was about issuing. Um, Just the number of authenticators running on the software or software authenticators. Okay, so, so it's about authenticators and um, software or, or like hard tokens for. To, to augment the passwords for MFA. Yeah. Um, YubiKeys are, are really good in the in the secrets of the second factor talk. That that one's all about like the phone numbers and like the push authentication and how like weird that can get. Um, yeah, I'd, I would encourage the, the UB keys. I have a mic. <laughs> um, mine is more about working with the, ve the vendor lists that they come out with. You know, you're paying the vendor and they're providing you with, hey, your people in your organization are seen and they're all compromised and they're mostly useless because they're yeah. old accounts that don't even exist anymore, but they just have your domain name on them, or we're changing passwords every 90 days, and that breach was 120 days ago. Is there a better source that you found? Uh, at this point, I haven't found a better source, and I, I know what you mean. And like the, the first week that we looked, it's like, hey, here's your 780 hits, and we narrowed it down to like six that were actually still valid and, and valid like passwords. Um, and then going out and actually actioning them. But to, you know, how valuable were those six to you, even if you did have like the 700 or whatever that, that were gibberish? So, yeah. So in your experience or opinion, how difficult do you think it is to get legal to understand the need for this kind of process uh, to require password dumps, et cetera? In, in, in my particular case, I, I think the conversations we're having a little, were had a little bit above me, but like definitely getting like data sheets, like your vendor is, is going to help you if you choose to go the vendor route um, and everything, and just probably probably being clear with that um, <laughs> with legal is best. And then I think there are two questions up front here. Yeah, we only have time for for two more, so okay, this will be the last two. <laughs> sure. uh, which password manager? Managers do you like and which don't you like? Uh, the question is about which password managers do I like and which ones don't I like? Um, my, my family uses one password. Um, my, my brother bought a license years and years ago and family plan, so my whole family's on it. So 
Um, I have like a, a 65 year old uncle and he's like, oh, this is cool. I can use a password manager. Now like he's encouraging all his friends and stuff to use it. So kind of developing that, that, that culture. So then it was like really easy um, when like workplace comes out or whatever and says, hey, use this password manager um, to, to roll into that. Um, that's a good one. For the longest time I used um, KeyPass personally. So um, I think if, if you went to the Diana initiative, I think 1Password even gave like a discount code. So. In, in your research, have you seen any companies that have been looking to try to solve the problem versus just to monetize the pro problem for their own personal gain? Yeah, the, the the question is about solving the problem versus monetizing the problem. Solving the problem of 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 malware, like go. Oh. Uh, I I didn't come across that. No. That was an inside joke. That was an inside joke. We were friends, and we, we were talking about this. Um, <laughs> the uh, we see these major large corporations buy these passwords for pretty cheap, and then sell them to companies for way, way much more money. <laughs> all right, that is unfortunately all the time we have for. I'm, I'm sure Susan will be available out there for questions if you do have any. Um, we do have a break now until the afternoon sessions, but thanks again so much for coming out, and please give one more hand for Susan. Susan.